Welcome back to part two, empirical and molecular formula determination. Uh, we're going to pick up with the third problem in this series. We've already done two in the last video, and we'll just keep learning a few more skills as we go. In this problem, you're, giving, you're given uh, a total mass and a percentage for one of the components. So again, let's fill out the form and figure out what's going on here. So we know for sure that... Um, oops. We know for sure that we have 30% of the uh, material is oxygen because it said 30% um, of the material is known to be oxygen. So we're, we're clear there. That means that the remaining must be 70%. Um, unfortunately, this time we have 119.7 grams sample. So we know that the total mass is 119.7 grams. So you need to figure out how much mass you actually have of each one. Um, so what I'm going to do is take 0.7, or 70%, 0.7, and multiply that by um, 119.7 grams, and we're going to wind up having a total mass of 83.8 grams of iron. And we can quickly subtract those two, the 119.7 uh, minus the 83.8, to get the mass of the oxygen, and that turns out to be 35.9 grams. Right there. So we know we have 35.9 grams. Again, you could do 0.3 times 119.72 to get the percentage for the uh, oxygen as well if you wanted to do it that way. Now that we have our, our masses, we need to go to moles. So again, moles uh, is mass divided by our uh, molar mass. So let's set up a ratio again. 83.8 grams of iron is equal to x moles. And I know that one mole is equal to 55.847 grams. Oops, where's my decimal place? Um, of iron. So 55.85 grams is one mole. So we'll set that up. If we cross multiply, we find out that we get 1.5 moles of iron. Let's do the same thing with the oxygen. We've got 35.9 grams of uh, oxygen. And we don't know how many moles that is. That's x moles. But we do know that one mole is equal to uh, 16 grams, 15.999 grams. So cross multiply again, and we'll actually get 1.5, or sorry, no, 2.24 moles of oxygen for that one. Okay, so let's write out our formula. We've got, oops, I don't like that color, so let's go. Fe 1.5, O 2.24. Not whole numbers, they are not the lowest possible uh, ratio, so we're going to divide both of them by 1.5. Take your smallest number, divide them both, and when you do that, you're going to get Fe 1, O 1.5. Okay, now we have an issue. If this last number here, so let's go back to this color. If this number were a 1.1, then we would say, ah, that's close enough to 1, who cares? We'll just throw away that 0.1. If it were a 1.9, we could easily round it up and say, well, maybe that should be a 2, F-E-O-2. But in this case, since we're right in the center, that sends a red flag up. And what we need to do in this case is to multiply both numbers by 2. And we're going to wind up with a formula of Fe2O3. Okay, now why do we do that? It's an easy way to take a 0.5 and make it a whole number is to multiply by 2. Are there other like red flag numbers that we're going to run up against? And the answer is yes. If you get something 0.5, then you're going to take that number and multiply by 2 to get a whole number. If you have a number that's 0.33, then we're going to take that, so let's say this number over here was a fictional one. Let's say we get Fe1O1.33. Uh, 
what we'll do there is we'll say, let's multiply everything by three, okay, and that'll get me a whole number. So if you get something that ends in a 0.33, multiply that by three and get a whole number. You may also see that you'll get something with a 0.66. And again, you're going to multiply that one by 3, 2. And these will all give you whole numbers in the end. So red flags. If you get a 0.5, instead of just rounding it up or rounding it down, you're going to multiply everything in the empirical formula by 2. A 0.33, you multiply everything in the empirical formula by 3. So again, our empirical formula is iron, two, or sorry, iron 3 oxide or Fe2O3. This problem is going to give us a mix of a whole bunch of things and it's going to throw in a twist. So let's follow this one through and figure out how do we work our way through these kinds of problems. So if you start out, you're told right away that you have half a mole of a compound, 0.5 moles of a compound, and that its empirical formula is 181 grams per mole. So let's just hold on to that information at this point. We have half a mole and its empirical formula is 181. Now, it says six grams of the material in the beaker is hydrogen. So I can come to hydrogen and I can say, well, I know I have six grams of that. It, they also tell you that you have three moles of carbon. So I can put three moles over here, 3.0 moles over there. Um, and the rest is oxygen. Well, if I know moles and I know grams, but okay, well, I can easily convert the moles and grams and grams to moles. So for carbon, if I have three moles of carbon, three moles of carbon. Let's try a factor label approach this time. Three moles of carbon, and I'm gonna get rid of moles of carbon, and I wanna know grams. I know that one mole is equal to 12.011 grams, and when I multiply that out, I'm gonna wind up with, let's say, 36.0 grams for carbon. Uh, same thing, let's take a factor label approach with the hydrogen. If I have six grams of hydrogen, put it over one, I want to get rid of grams, and I want to get to moles. And I know that 1.008 grams, 797, or 1.008 grams is one mole. So when I divide six by 1.008, I'm going to wind up getting six. Okay, I'll wind up with a six there. Um, but that doesn't tell me anything about the oxygen. Like, it just tells me that the rest is oxygen. So I actually need to go back to what I told you in the very beginning, that you know you have half a mole of a compound and that a whole mole is equal to 181 grams per mole. So if I, let's change colors since we're doing a different operation here, um, 0.5 moles is equal to X grams and I know that one mole, according to my um, molar mass there, is equal to 181 grams. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to find out that I have a total of 90.5 grams of stuff. Okay. Simple subtraction will tell me that I'm going to wind up with 48.5 grams of stuff there. And now I have to convert that 48.5 grams worth of stuff into moles. And I'm going to wind up getting about 3.0 moles of oxygen when I can make that conversion. Because I'll take 48.5, we go back to our original colors, 48.5 grams over 1. I want to get rid of grams, so I'm going to divide, put grams on the bottom, and I know that for oxygen, 15.999 grams is one mole. So that'll give me 48.5 divided by 16, which is going to come out to be about roughly three. So now I need an empirical formula for this thing. So I'm going to wind up with C3H6O3. Well, is that an empirical formula? No, we can reduce them. They're all um, div divisible by three, so my empirical formula is really CH2O. Okay, so there's my empirical formula. It's a one, a two, and a one. So a one to two to one ratio. But is that the real formula? In order to know that, we need to calculate 
the molecular mass or molar mass of a CH2O. So one carbon is, has a mass of 12.011, two hydrogens have a mass of two, and an oxygen has a mass of about 16. If we total those up, 12 plus 2 plus 16 gives me a mass of 30 grams per mole, but I'm supposed to have a mass of 180. So then you have to ask yourself, well, how many 30s will go into 181? So take this mass down here and take your 181 and divide it by your molar mass. And 181 divided by 30 is going to give you an answer of 6. So that tells you that you actually have six empirical formulas inside the molecular formula. In other words, you have to multiply your empirical formula by six. So if I multiply C1H2O uh, by six, I'm going to wind up with C6H12O6. Okay. And if you are good in biology, you'll remember that that could be glucose. Um, and I'll point out here that this is actually the empirical formula for a family of chemicals called uh, carbohydrates. C for the carbo and the H2O, the water, for the hydrate, carbohydrates. So good luck solving these problems. There are all kinds of varieties. Just make sure that you solve for masses, you solve for moles, and you solve for percentages when they ask you for them, and keep your numbers straight. Good luck.